Today is a new opportunity to accomplish your incredible. So let's wake up each day with a fresh mindset necessary for you to win. I welcome you to rise and shine. Morning motivation for the girl boss with author, speaker, and founder of the Prestige Society, Nicole Doss. Let's jumpstart your morning now. Good morning, rise and shine. I am so excited to be able to just celebrate another day, another episode, another opportunity to be able to really step into our greatness, another opportunity to be able to step into our purpose and to be able to operate in those skill sets that God has given us that will allow us to be able to really help others as we grow our brands. Good morning, good morning, and good morning. So let's jump right into it. Today's word is authenticity. So I was watching over the weekend two documentaries, um, one on Hulu and one on Netflix around the Fire Festival. And for those of you who are not aware of the Fire Festival, it was this music festival that was supposed to happen in the Bahamas. Um, the promoter of this particular creator of this particular festival was uh, Billy McFarland, who was the CEO and founder of Magnesis and the co-founder of this festival was none other than Ja Rule. And so in watching this, um, it really hit me as far as, you know, authenticity. Like, <laughs> and, and, you know, I think that everything that I saw and everything that I gathered from this documentary was that everyone wants to be something else than what they are. Everyone wants to live a life that is, I guess, compared to what they see others living. Everyone wants to be that influencer that they see on social media. And unfortunately, those who could afford that opportunity, because I mean, the amount of money that the tickets were going for were like stupendous. I think uh, there were general admission tickets that were going for $999. And then the other tickets would go as far as like being $99,000. And so of course, you're supposed to get this, this uh, charter jet experience, you're supposed to have a, a villa, you were supposed to have access to all these great musical acts, and everything about it was a fraud. And, you know, not for nothing, I mean, I've had my own experience in seeing people in the music industry, I've actually had my own experience even meeting Ja Rule, and it's like, everything these people in, in the music industry and everything that is put in front of you is put in front of you by design. It is put in front of you to make you want to have this lifestyle. It is put in front of you so that you can believe that these things are happening. I mean, it's funny, even on the, um, the Netflix documentary, there was a, a call after the festival where nothing that they have advertised was true. Like nothing. People were stranded. They did not have a place to sleep. They were completely left to just kind of, you know, be, it was like Survivor Island. Like you, you didn't even have food. They were told that Steven Starr was going to be, and you know, me being a girl who eats out in, you know, in Philadelphia, we're, we are very accustomed to Budokan and, and Continental Pod, you know, some of those, those Steven Starr restaurants. And so, you know, when you think you're going to have this great cuisine from Steven Starr, but instead you get literally wheat bread, cheese, lettuce, and tomato, and that's what you get, and that's what you get to eat. Your um, quarters where you sleep are FEMA um, huts or FEMA tents. Um, you know, mattresses are soaking wet from the rain that happened a few days before it started. When when you think about this, this very um, intentional misleading of information, all for personal gain. You know, I really. So bad for those who, who were part of that. But at the end of this event, which was really interesting, was that someone was saying how, like, you know, this was fraud. Like, their team, their internal team said, because they wanted to try another business. And they were like, well, I don't think you should try another business because at the end of the day, this was fraud. And Ja Rule's response to it was, well, that's not fraud. 
and he said, I'll call it instead, um, he said, misadvertisement or false advertisement. Well, listen, note to self, sir, false advertisement and telling people and deliberately selling people something that is not supposed to be or not supposed to happen, that's fraud. That's fraudulent activity. And that individual is actually doing six years in jail for um, a number of fraudulent activities that were that were done all in the name of making money. And so when I think of authenticity, I really think about girl bosses now, it's it's so important for you to, to sit down and reflect and understand what is this business that you're creating and, and really what's the reason behind it. And if you're driven by things that are superficial, if you are driven by things like money, cars, you know, becoming an influencer, those kind of things, um, I think that you will very easily be led down a path of, you know, just not being able to focus on the right things, which is creating a business to really be a solution to your target market. I mean, I wasn't going to say lead you down a path of destruction, but at the end of the day, that's what happened. I mean, this person was, you know, he's in jail for six years because of this and, um, I, it really, I don't know, for me, I feel like it struck a chord. I, I did a Instagram live on this and, and it really struck a chord with me because it reminded me the importance of being authentic to who I am and what I am called to do. And it also struck a chord with me because I realized that at certain points in my career of building the prestige brand, I get inundated and sidetracked with doing things that I think I'm supposed to do because I am a quote unquote influencer. And I, I, I love opportunities for accountability. Anybody who does not like to be checked, but like checked in a way where it's like giving you um, confliction and you realize that you need to be accountable for your actions. That means that, um, you don't know how to be accountable and you really need to be accountable once you are a business owner because you are literally putting yourself in front of others to say, this is my business. This is my business and I am providing this service to others. So there's a responsibility that comes with that. There's a responsibility for being able to operate a business based on integrity. There's a responsibility to make sure that you are um, providing a service or products that have quality, that you now are also responsible for making sure that sure that what you are selling and what you are providing are the same and that you build trust among your clientele. And I think that is extremely important because it's so easy for us to get sidetracked. And I'll tell you, for me, my sidetrack moment was, you know, that, that being so close to 10K, being so close to 10K and can't wait till I can get to 10K because then I'll be considered an influencer. And I'll never forget um, there, I went to BYOB, which is build your own brand. Uh, it is a, a conference or a summit that is created by, um, I don't know his full name. I just know his handle on Instagram and it's called brand with Drew. And he had the co-founder of Blavity there. And I want to say his name was John Jackson. Don't get me start lying, but nonetheless, he's a co-founder of Blavity and he had the most compelling Kino. I mean, he was such a great speaker. He infused his his conversation with music. He came with his own DJ, and it really just took us on a ride of his his climb up the ladder to success in leaving his corporate job with LinkedIn to really being full time committed to Blavity. And the thing is, is that although on paper it seemed like this climb up the ladder of success, he realized that spiritually, emotionally, and personally, he did not like who he became to get there and he didn't know how to turn back. He did not know how to turn back because he knew that those very attributes were the attributes that got him where he was, but he didn't like who he had become along the way. And I've, he said, the world doesn't need another influencer. I remember then being like, wow, that is so, that's so deep. Because he said half of these, these companies who are looking to you to become an influencer, they don't care about your tribe. They don't care about the people who are following you. And I remember then feeling like, wow, I really need to take that into consideration. But then less than a year later, 
I lose, I, I completely lose sight of that. And, and seeing that, that video really brought me back to a point where it made me realize, you know, we need to be always anchored to our purpose with our businesses. And, and we really need to trust and believe in our higher powers directing our steps. And we really need to make sure that whenever we show up, we're authentic. We're not only authentic of who we are, but we're authentic to the core mission and vision um, of our companies. And so I challenge you today to really think about your authenticity and how are you showing up with your authenticity how does your authenticity here here, let me tell you about being authentic authentic comes with also um a a little bit of being transparent And, and one of the things that they talked about in this particular video was that when he messed up like at some point first of all they knew from the beginning that this just would not be able to work because normally when you try to pull off a festival of that magnitude you need 12 months preparation but unfortunately he thought he can do it in four months and he's the kind of guy that believes he can do and be anything so when this came about Everyone kept telling him, like, you need more time, you need more time. But he really did surround himself with a lot of people who were just a peanut gallery, right? A lot of yes men, a lot of people who were just pushing, 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 trying to make this happen. And what was really interesting along this way is that at some point, someone said to him, like, you have to come clean because now people are here and they're taking pictures and they're posting how much this is not like what you've advertised. And when he began to write the memo, he said, you know, um, due to things out of our control and the person, I think his name was Mark Weinstein, who was the festival music festival consultant. He was like, stop. Like at this point, you have to stop lying to the people. It is not from, you know, due to things out of your control. You made poor decisions every step of the way that led to this. And it's time for you to own it. And I want you to think about some times where in your authenticity, you know, how did you not show up and how did that impact your client base? How did you do things that may have negatively impacted your client base? How did you come clean with them and and not even like just, a, oh, I'm so sorry, my bad, but, you know, really coming clean as far as some of the things that you've done that led to this road of, of, of how you've impacted them. And I think that is just as important as um, you making sure that you're authentic and always showing up right. For me, I always try to be the best version of, you know, this prestige CEO that I can be. I always try to make sure that I'm, I'm tapped or anchored into my purpose. But the reality is, you know, I'm a human being and I will never forget forget, you know, in the fourth quarter of 2017, when I was at my lowest, and I was losing people left and right. And I would could not understand why I was losing members left and right, because these are members who were like my who I thought were my ride or dies. And I realized that I had lost my way. And I've had some moments where, you know, I'm so thankful those members had come back. And I had the opportunity. And I would do lives and I would share with people all the time. I lost my way because I focused on the things that I thought would make money for prestige. And in that, I wasn't giving my members of prestige the attention they needed in order for them to feel like this is a value for them. And once I realized that was a mistake, I had those conversations. I remember one person um, in particular who um, left but then came back and I had that one-on-one with her. And I just told her how, you know, her leaving specifically was my wake-up call and what was going on with prestige at the time and how I thank her for waking me up and allowing me to see that I was not paying attention to the things that matter to the business. You have to be authentic and being authentic is going to require you to have some levels of transparency. It's going to allow you to have levels of vulnerability. These are things we talk about all the time on the show. We talk about you needing to be vulnerable, you needing to be transparent, but that's where you're able to be relatable to to those individuals that you're helping and that you are providing a service to. You taking money from people is a is serious business. You are not building business just so you can become rich. You built your business because you truly believe it's a solution for them, for whatever problem that they're having. There's a responsibility that you have to to that. And I think that we get lost along the way. We're just looking for the next quick, the get rich quick thing that can allow us to have a really plush lifestyle. And we forget that we are in business to provide a service for our clientele.
It's a selfless job. Yes, you should be paid for the work that you do, but at the same time, you have to remember that you are in a position of providing a service. And that's important for you to remember that if you aren't of a spirit of providing a service, you should really second guess why you have a business. Or maybe you should only be the sole investor of the business. You need to hire someone to be the face of the business where they understand how to build those relationships. But nonetheless, all this comes from you being authentic to who you are. If you know you suck at building relationships with people, be authentic and real with yourself and figure out if you really feel like this business is still what you are called to do, then how do you get the right people in place to help you build those connections? Be authentic in letting people know why you do what you do every day. Be authentic in letting people know sometimes it's just not that great being an entrepreneur. Be authentic in letting people know what's on your mind. Be authentic and when you make mistakes, own it. And apologize for those mistakes. Because when people take their hard-earned money that they work hard for every single day and they make the the the, the clear mindset or the, the clear decision to invest and spend their hard-earned money with you, I don't care if it's two dollars. You don't know if that person was on that that was their last two dollars and instead they gave it to you. You need to be mindful of that. That someone thought enough about your brand to invest and spend it with you. So the question is, you know, how are you showing up? So I I don't really have three steps for you this morning, but I really want to just speak to you in a space where you can really begin to feel comfortable in being your true authentic self. We live in a world where we praise and we, we glorify and we idolize highlight reels of others through the power of social media, but it's time for you to strip yourself, your business, and all of those things that are in your life of that falseness. Strip yourself of all those superficial things and really get to the core of why you do what you do. And if you need to do it with blinders on where you don't see certain people and how they move, then you set those blinders up because you were called to, to bless others. And you have to figure out how do you walk in that calling? How do you operate in that calling as your true authentic self? Because you are truly muddying the waters and you are blocking your blessings when you decide decide to put on a mask or a facade that is going to cause you to show up as any other person other than who you truly are. So I hope that as you start your Monday, as you start this first day of the week, you start refreshed and renewed knowing that you are going to step into your business and step into this week targeting and slaying goals as your true authentic self. All right, divas, have a wonderful, awesome, and most of all, fabulous day. Bye.